Hey everybody, hope you're doing fantastic. So, thought today we might work on another um, cloudscape and work on that because I don't think you can ever practice clouds too much. <laughs> so, so let's uh, jump over here to the inking tool. Uh, it doesn't really matter which one you use, and I just want to kind of sketch something in real quick. So we are using uh, Rebel 6 Pro with the um, oil color palette that is downloadable from them. I have True Pigment turned on, and this is 8 by 8 by 10, so at 150 dpi. Okay. All right. So I'm thinking maybe something along the lines of maybe something like this. Maybe coming over something along here. Uh, I think we're going to put the horizon here. So that way it really feels like there's an expanse of clouds. Kind of circling up like so. And we'll have these come over. Now we're going to kind of flatten these out here. Maybe have them flatten out. Maybe have that be a one set of clouds. And another set right through here. Like so. Okay, something along the lines of that. And then I'm thinking maybe we'll have a mountain range or some sort here coming down. Another one here, and then right in here, probably off this direction, we'll have the sun, and we'll have some rays kind of shooting up past something along the lines of this. Something like that, and then maybe just have another little hillside down through here. And then we'll figure out down here. I may put some water or something, I don't know. But anyway, the main focus is going to be this sunrise, sunset, clouds. Okay, so we've got that there. Now let's, um, let's paint in some underpainting. So I'm going to grab a little bit of this yellow ochre. And I'll tell you what, just to make it simple so you guys can follow along, I'll go ahead and make a new layer. I'm going to paint some of that there. Some of this golden ochre next to it. Kind of paint it on. Maybe with just a touch of orange. Cadmium red. Press 4. Kind of blend it all together. And I'm going to select that. And I'm going to go a little bit more towards the center there, like so, okay? So now I'm just going to grab the fill tool. I'm going to do Control A, Delete, Control D. I'm going to tell it to wet the layer. And let's do that. Oh no, our stuff went away. There we go. All right, so now we have that, so we can start kind of laying in some ideas for color and stuff. I'm going to move my mic, so it's going to be a little noise here for a second. There we go. All right, so we want to lay in some blue first. So let's go with a little cerulean. Oops. I forgot to change my brush. Right, so a little cerulean. I'm going to switch over here to the knife smooth. Titanium white. And maybe just a touch of magenta 4. Smear that around a little bit. 
think. With this kind of a bluish color. All right, so I think that's going to work for where we're at here. And if we look over here at this blue, you can see that it got us to right in this middle section, which is where we usually want to work at to begin with. And there's the hex code, so that way if you need it. Okay. All right, so I'm going to use the right bracket to increase the size. And just kind of paint some of this in. I'm going to paint over this brown and let it kind of muddy up over here. And then over here where there's not clouds, I'm going to give it a little bit more pressure to put a little bit more paint down. And then down here I'm going to give it a little bit less and just kind of let it do its thing of grabbing some of this color. So the reason I'm doing that is, is that this is going to mute that brown a little bit more. I mean the blue a little bit more. It's going to mute the blue and give us some of this kind of grayish color that we'll use for our clouds. Okay. I'm going to select that same kind of grayish so that way I can just go ahead and throw this in quicker. along the lines of that. And that's going to give us kind of that nice rich color. I'm going to grab a little bit of this purplish color towards there. Okay. And we're going to just kind of lay in some of this as well. Just kind of here and there. I'm going to grab a little bit of this more reddish color. And kind of put some of that in here. And then I'll push four. I'm just going to kind of blend that around and warm up some of these clouds right here. Even though it's a still a cool color, it's a little bit more red in it, so it's going to give it a little bit more of a warm feeling. Okay. Something like that. All right, so now come back over here to this color. And let's just kind of throw some of this in here. Kind of really lay in where our sky is, using the left bracket key to make it a little bit smaller. Don't really care about the lines, just try to keep the general shape of what we're doing. Kind of in here. Pick some of that color and bring out some cloud shapes. So I'm just kind of letting the pen drop in some texture. needed. Okay. Hit four again real quick. Just kind of blend this around. Scrub it in. There we go. This we're going to kind of just smear this orangish color back up get rid of some of that. All right. Now I want to have more of a peachy color here, so I'm going to grab dogwood. This Naples yellow. Press 4. And then select this. I think that's going to work kind of give us the base for down here. 
where we'll have a little bit of lighter stuff going on. I think some of the brighter spots are going to kind of be in through here. Be bright up here as bright. So we're just going to blend that out like so. And then on this, we'll blend some of this backside. Like so. Pencil. So I'm just trying to blend this kind of into itself a little bit. So that way we get some gradations. Like I said, I want this to be sun streaking. So I want to use some of that same color to start laying some of that in. Let's take a little bit of that bracket. I'm just trying to think where some of these wisps and brighter areas might be. And press 4. Excuse me, sir. I don't know about you guys where you're at, but where I'm at, the weather keeps changing and it's messing with my sinuses. So if I cough every now and then, I apologize. I've got sinuses going crazy. I've got some drainage going on. It keeps tickling the back of my throat. <clears throat> so I think that's kind of where I want those to be. Let's take some of the same dark color and kind of lay it in. Big swaths of color. Now we can push four. Just kind of blend these together. Try not to over blend it so you don't get rid of all your darks, but you want to blend it enough that it makes sense with what's around it. And I keep using these curly motions. I carry it over into this one. To it a little bit. Bring that down. The nice things about using this um, number four brush right here, this blend, is that you can really push this paint around and get some really interesting blends and softness. And again, we're still underpainting, but we're starting to gradually shape clouds and you really honestly at this point you can't you can't do it wrong okay so don't overthink it all right I mean I know I'm painting it kind of quick but um, the key thing is here you've seen where I'm laying in a little color and then I blend it and I lay in a little color and I blend it 
And all I'm trying to do is get a shape and a color that I think works. And the reason I say you can't really mess this up unless you overthink about it is because these are all just blobs of colors. There's nothing here that's overly drawn. Okay, so if you're not a good, you know, you don't sketch well, don't worry about it. Throw in some of this, these paints here and there for the darks and the lights. And you'll start to get more of a feel for what you're wanting. Now for this, I'm going to saturate this a little more and I'm going to go up a little higher on the red side. Actually, I make them over here to this opposite side because that's a little orangey. It's a little more red, so I want that. And I want to put in some of this red here through here. And then I'm going to grab a little bit of this same color we had here before and just kind of drop in a few splotches here and there. Go back to four. And I'm trying to keep these fairly horizontal at the moment. Okay. And then I can come back up here. I've curled this around. Bring the size down. Just kind of scrub left and right. You notice I've got a slight curve. I want that to Okay. And now All right, so now that I've got some of these good splotches of colors in this is where I'm going to start kind of shaping out for where I want there to be clouds. You know, like defined clouds. I mean, we've got clouds already, but you know what I mean. Like, like the actual cloud shapes. And I'm just going to kind of keep pushing the shadow and the highlight. Okay, so I'm just kind of pushing and pulling this with each other. Increase my size so I get a little bit smoother transition. So that's given us some good shapes there. Now we're going to come back here again in a moment and really define some of these. I'm going to show you kind of how to do that. Um, so let me bring back this line art real quick. Okay. I'm going to grab a little bit of this color here. To that. I'm going to grab a little bit of this bluish color here. Like that. Okay, turn off this again. Now I am, you noticed, you've probably noticed by now, I'm doing this on one layer. You do not have to do it on one layer. If you want to use multiple layers, by all means, 
do so. It can be easier to manage. There may be a spot when I'm get painting on this where I'm like, ah, oh, I wish I'd done this on the silver layer. <laughs> so that's why I normally do the sky and then the clouds and then the hills on separate layers. So that way I can go back and really play around with it. But I just felt like um, just kind of playing with it on this one layer. Like if I was doing a uh, traditional painting. Just trying to give some indication of some hills, you know, I mean, edges and stuff, so it's kind of lit on one side. And then this, I'm going to kind of do similar just by dragging it around. This is very much in shadow, so I don't want to have as much indication, but I am going to want some indication. Okay, so I'm just going to grab this little bit of a smeared lighter color and just kind of throw that in there. And for the most part, just this darker color. All right, so we've we've talked about atmospheric perspective before. Show you a little bit more of this. See how this is lighter? than this this that makes this now also the fact that it's overlapping makes this appear closer all right so we're going to do it again this time just to make it simple i'm going to just take the lasso tool and blue throw that in there grab a little of that phthalo throw that in there with this purplish color. <coughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> Boom, black. Now I'm just going to blend these. Boom, black. Down size. Okay, press one, bring that up. I'm a space bar to. Drag the canvas up, color that in. Okay, so that's a really dark color. Not quite black, though. Close, but not quite. I'm going to save this real quick because that was just glitching, so I'm going to save this real quick. So give me one second. All right, so we got that saved. Push period, that brings it right back to the center of the screen. So one thing let's stop and talk about real quick. So you've seen me blend in some of these colors and we've got that underpainting there. So even if you're doing this on multiple layers, uh, if you're doing what I'm doing of blending these colors, you're going to get some really intriguing mixes here and there. You know, like if you look here, we've got some kind of greenish colors through here. I had somebody mention that one time um, in a lecture that I was uh, listening to. And they pointed out the fact of, you know, look at the sky. What colors do you see? And everybody's like, oh, blues and, and you know, whites and grays and peaches. And he's like, and he's like well, what about the green? And they're like, what? I don't see any green. He's like, yeah, there's green. So if you look at clouds, because if you think about a cloud color and light coming across it and so forth, it's the rainbow. So you're still going to get greens. You're going to get blues and indigos and violets and all that stuff. But you're going to get all these different mixes of colors. And I think that's what gives us that really intriguing bit that as I've developed more as a painter personally, I've started realizing there's more and more there. So I wanted to, you know, take a moment to point out to you, there's look at these grayish greens. There's these, you know, wonderful purples and blues and all that stuff. And I think it's because we've got all these... Um, complementary colors that are playing off each other i think we're getting some really intriguing looking stuff okay so that's why i'm building it up this way is to show you that 
but also to challenge myself to do it, to play around with it more and um, try and create better artwork. And then hopefully by you guys coming along through all of this, it'll make you create better artwork as well. But it's something to think about. You know, we're getting some much more dynamic stuff. So this uh, one thing I want to work on right now real quick here is I think this is too purpley. So I'm going to blend some of this out just by smearing it around a little bit. I'm going to add just a little bit of this cadmium orange to it. Go back to four. And just kind of dull that down a little bit. I'll blend that around there as well. I think that's going to help. Kind of sell some of that. Okay. So I think that's going to give us some of those different colors and everything else we need. So now what I want to do is I want to start pushing the lights and the darks on this. And particularly some of the lights, because we've got some good darks here. But I want to start bringing some of those lights out. So I'm going to go ahead and make a new layer. Okay. And now I can really just kind of relax and play around with stuff. So let's grab this color and let's come up a little bit and over a little bit. So we're adding a little bit more blue and a little bit more white just by doing that. Okay, I think that's going to work. So what we're going to do is we're going to fill in some of this area here. Okay, so because I'm on the new layer I can just paint over this. Now I'm thinking my sunlight sun is here. So I want to think if I'm coming out from here, where is that going to like so? Okay. So it's going to kind of do that. Now one thing you can do here that I think will help with this is I'm going to push T. And I'm going to stretch that out a little bit. And I'm going to go over to warp. That split down to just two. Yeah, switch to my mouse. Just kind of straightening some of this up a little bit. I miss this is one area that I miss the uh, uh, just doing it in perspective. this like so Hit enter shift control i delete shift control i go back to that I'm go back to my brush I'm going to grab get key up 4 
want to put some streaks in this. So I'm grabbing from where there's no paint and smearing it down, which is going to make it a little bit more transparent. And then I can take it just softly back the other way. So, control D, and I get this down in size, and I can go to E for erase, and I can get rid of it on all of these front lower clouds. I can even go to the masking tool. Freehand, freehand. Feet, control D. Delete. blending stick. Let's go with soft. And just soften that. <coughs> so that's pretty pretty subtle. Now here's one of the interesting things. You can actually turn off the paint here, the true pigment. Switch this to overlay. And that's going to give you an interesting look. Sorry. So we've got some of those colors built up really well. <clears throat> Back down to this one. back up to here with the overlay. I'm going to grab this Naples yellow. Bring this down. Come through here. And go a little bit lighter yellow. Come across. Like so. And I'm streaking this back and forth because it'll make it look more like clouds. Or glow, see? So it starts to build in some of that atmospheric perspective. I'm going to grab a little of this white. I'm going to go over here to the airbrush. And I'm going to say that my sun is somewhere in here. Undo this real quick. Change this one to overlay as well. I'll build some of that in there, then I'm going to go back to this oil brush. So four. Again, kind of streak that across. M. and delete and delete 
that really lights that up behind there and brings that out across. Right? So now what I want to do, I'm going to select those three layers and I'm going to blend on and merge them, I mean. So the merge and turn back on the true pigment. So now I've got my glow here. Okay. Now I can use this glow to start painting my highlights. Okay. My smooth knife. And bring it way down. Not painting. paint for some reason. For some reason it thought I had something selected. Not sure why, but okay. Alright, back to the knife smooth. We're going to come in and just kind of start haloing some of these edges. Not the whole thing. See how I'm breaking up the line? Okay. So just kind of bring these in here and there. We're going to switch to four and we're going to go in behind. Let me zoom in on this. So what I'm doing is I'm coming in here and I'm making little circles and getting rid of the back edge. Like so. On some of this, I'll just really blend it out. Okay. Space bar to move your canvas. Again, some of this I want to break up, not quite as distinct. Like so. And this one I'm going to kind of make it a little bit wispy, just by smearing it and going at an angle. And kind of flattening back out. I make it a little bit wispy again. So,
So see how that starts to give you some of those interesting highlights. Then you can kind of start playing around with some of the shapes. Okay, and then it's just a matter of kind of keep going back and forth and doing it. So now one of the other things I want to show you is, I'm going to leave this here, but I'm going to come back down to here. One of the reasons that is one of the things that can be good for blending on this layer with the clouds is that I can build up, and, and this is what I do more on my paintings that I spend a huge amount, you know, a lot more time on, because, you know, most of these paintings that we do together, I'm spending two, three hours on. The other ones I can spend like 12 hours on, okay? But by bringing it here, I can go to one, paint it in, come to four and blend back and forth with the paint that's already here. And the advantage of this versus blending on top of it, like I did here, is that I can really interact with the color that's below it and start, um, you know, going back and forth to different stuff and then painting in a lot more color and highlights and areas where it looks like the cloud itself has some translucency to it. And again, you want to be careful here not to blend it, not to get rid of all your darks. Use your dark to paint back in. Different lighting and some different so I'm going to zoom that out a little bit and see how that starts to build up these layers so you can use that to add in more color and really kind of keep shaping in Pulling some of that local color up those nice, luscious looking clouds that have that light kind of rolling through them. Okay. And so then you can even come over here and grab different colors. Spot in here. It's got a bit more light coming through it. On both sides. Something like that. And just kind of keep pulling and pushing around. So, and you can get as impressionistic or as um, realistic as you want, but it's by building up these layers and layers and layers that's going to let you keep refining it into a more uh, realistic photo type look. paint over top of this these other layers but just like with the hills if I'm doing like these darker clouds darker they are, the closer they're going to appear. And I can use it to push. So 
some of these other clouds back like so maybe add a little bit of darkness up here and just kind of keep blending it pushing it pulling it and if you can have these areas where this dark is kind of hitting next to this light, it's really going to make that light stand out and really, you know, be something kind of cool to look at. And let's say through here, you're like, yeah, you know, I really want to have that light that was coming up through here just really kind of streak against it. So you can come back down here, grab this, and I would say maybe come a little bit oranger. It's peach color. And because you've got some of that it's really cooler colors like purples and stuff, if you throw a little bit of this peach here and there, you're going to really get some clouds that pop. Because then you can do it just a little bit here and there and then blend it in. And you always, for this, you want the bright spot to be more on the bottom. You can even go to something like the knife texture. And really kind of use that to break up. And get some wisps. And a little more. But anyway, so what I was saying was, let's say that you want to have that kind of like what we did a minute ago. We can go with our selection tool. Again, we're going to follow that same line. So we're going to come up somewhere around through here. Now, one of the things I really like about the bell is that I can take and move these, these nodes around. Okay, so let's say we're going to do something in here, right? So now we can do the same thing. We could either go in here and we could paint this on here, or again, we could come above it. Go to overlay. Back to our paintbrush. Realize that we're on that yellowish color, which is going to give us a really crazy color. Or actually, you know what? We can just, oh, I'm on vivid. How did that in the light? There we go. Go to four. Excuse me. So something like that again. Switch to E. Bring it down in size. And again, really go in and cut out and erase out where it wouldn't be showing across the clouds. Definitely not these guys. use this to kind of cut back and erase and make it a little bit more um, broken up.
Let's see how you can kind of control it. Interesting golden look. So let's go ahead and all right now I'm going to go ahead and add in another layer put this one back to that and then I'm going to add another layer I'm going to do this one overlay as well and I want to add in I'll grab this Naples. Actually, I'm going to go to this light yellow I've got here. And brush. And I want to add in seats. Real soft stuff. Out through here. Just to kind of give a hint. Of where there might be those hills and some extra cloud texture. You can also go to four on this one. And use it to soften up some of these. Just use it to silver up some of this again. And again, it's silver it, blur it, smear it, silver it, blur it, smear it. The key thing here is make sure that you're underlighting these clouds. It's really looking like it's getting hit with some light. And don't be afraid to switch brushes and bounce around on brushes, okay? You can get some really cool effects by combining these things. And then going in and erasing them back. Softening them. So, so now what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to make one more layer, put this one on multiply, and I'm going to grab different colors. Actually, I'm going to grab a little bit of this cap yellow. I'll go back to the knife soft. I'm just looking here real quick. I want to see what color I like. And I think that one's it. So I'm going to grab this. I'm just going to lay on. Shadows. You're just kind of playing around with some of the areas. So I can pull some of these clouds a little closer. And
plain air. Yeah, plain air is better. And then four. Just kind of soften. You can even take a little bit of that if you want to make it look like there's a cast shadow going off. Do that. Hint of detail down here. Pushes it a little bit. Let's do the same up here. It's so kind of like what we were doing with the highlight there. We can actually do a little bit of that with this just by having it kind of stick to the same shape. pushes that back a little bit and come over here and add just a little bit more to these guys too distracting, almost out of place. A 
All right. So again, this is very impressionistic. It's a good study, a good playing around of, of what you want to do. And there's a lot more that you could do to add stuff in here. Like you could add a few more bright spots. If you wanted to. Just something as simple as that. So there we go. And some of the key things with that is, is for this part, just make sure that you're going the same direction for where your point is going to be at. Okay. I'd like to add just a little bit more light. You can add more wisps if you want to. You can more of these edges like so.
And again, it's just a matter of how much do you want to soften it? How much do you want to build up stuff? How much do you want to lighten it? Uh, and so forth. So, and the other thing I like to do, which is kind of becoming a thing with me, I don't know why, is I getting in those white birds. So I'm going to do that again real quick. They're going, don't have the white birds. But I like the white birds. It's my painting. I'll do what I want to. You do what you want to in yours. All right. Let's put these guys on a separate layer. There we go. And border. And paint. To me, there's just something about those white birds that just says hope. Maybe it's just the doves from my Christian beliefs. Um, who knows? There's all the areas that we painted that bluish color on. Oops, I kicked that out of there. Hang on. All right. So I hope you guys got something out of this. I hope you see how you can really play around with colors and get that color harmony by blending it green and clouds and grayish colors and blues and purples and reds and oranges and you know the whole rainbow is represented there so it's definitely a possibility take your time playing around with it more like i said i um you know even though these still work out to about two hours um but still push it more to do it so if i'm trying to do a full oil painting kind of deal um and let me know in the comments what you guys want to see more of is there something particular that you have a question about or something particular that you'd like to see how to do? But I'm hoping this gives you an idea of how to play around with a little bit of the overlay, a little bit of the multiply, a whole lot of color blending and layering and doing it so forth. Again, if it's uh, you're not as familiar with it, you can definitely do the sky in one layer, the clouds on the next, mountains and foreground on another. Okay. can make your life a little bit easier. So anyway, I appreciate you guys being here. I'll see you on the next one.